everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about fig ripeness. And also, you know, is it really possible to get a dried fig in a humid climate? Is this really attainable? And I, the short answer to that is no. But you can see right in front of you that this fig is on its way to becoming dried. It's certainly starting to shrivel. Um, by no means is this a dried fig that you find in the store. In fact, I would only really recommend that you dry them at that state if you're going to be shipping them commercially. To be honest with you, having um, enough water sucked out of this is going to intensify the flavor. Uh, but you don't want to get it perfectly dried because then you're going to lose that fresh figginess that it gets. And I think personally, it's of lesser quality. I mean, you could obviously disagree, but... You know, this is only really happening right now in my climate because a certain couple things here have happened at one time. And let me talk about that right now. So it's been really warm here. Um, it's been pretty much high 80s, 90 degrees Fahrenheit every day here for about the last week or so. Um, probably seven to nine days. We haven't seen any, any drops of rain. Um, not only have the days been warm, but they've been dry. The humidity has been low. You can see that in the wilting of these plants, um, not necessarily the fig trees, but some of the weaker plants, maybe the annuals. So it's, it's certainly been dry and any rain that would have occurred while this fig was ripening could have impeded the skin, it could have really penetrated the skin. It could have also absorbed some of that water. And if you absorb that water, whether it's through rain as we've talked about in a prior video, or maybe you have improper irrigation techniques. Maybe you're watering them too much, and over time, the fig has been sucking up water and putting some of that water into the fig itself. You therefore have a lower bricks, regardless of either scenario. You're gonna have less sugar content. And sugar is a natural preservative, just like salt. And sugar is essentially preserving the fig, or any fruit, from becoming spoiled to the elements, fermenting, molding, um, you name it. So it's really important that you have all these conditions all aligning. Otherwise, in some place like me, where we get 40 inches of rain annually, you're in a temperate climate that's quite humid, this is just not gonna happen for you. This is a real treat for me. Some of you guys in California and Arizona may be watching right now and saying, that's what all of our figs look like. And you know what? You guys are real lucky because I'm gonna pick this right now. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about this and why this fig is so good because it's so ripe. And the longer we wait with our figs, it's always better. So let me put you guys down for just one minute, everyone. And we're gonna talk about why I think this is such a high quality fig. This may only happen twice my entire season. I may only get a fig like this of this quality twice. And I wanna give you guys a nice little close up here. Um, you know, maybe you guys can see this pretty well. We're gonna bring you guys down in a moment, but you can see on the exterior, now that it's out of the shadows, it's really starting to dry you can really start to see these ribs in the fig are depressing. So that's a really good sign. Also, the neck is starting to shrivel as well. It's getting wrinkles. To me, that is the most optimal sign. And you're only gonna find this, by the way, another condition that has to be met is on a fig that hasn't been exposed to the outside. The rain is gonna deteriorate the skin, excess nitrogen is gonna cause cracking in the skin. Cracking is gonna, of course, expose the outdoor elements into the interior of the fig. So it's really important that we're also not getting any cracking, which you don't really see here. There's an ant that has dug its way in, probably in the last day or so. But that, other than that, there's no way that this thing has been exposed to anything. The eye should be closed as well especially blocking out anything from getting in or any kind of exposed elements from getting in. So let's talk about now the, the ripeness of this. I wanna, I wanna break this open for you guys. 
and I want to talk about the flavor here for just a moment because this is really something exceptional. You don't, again, I don't see this every day. This is really something to be talking about. And that's, that's really why I'm showing you guys this, this particular fig. There, there's a huge difference in the climates that you guys might be growing these in. So I want to make this real clear in that, you know, yeah, this may be a complete norm for some of you guys, but this is not a norm for me by any, any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it's only really in this part of the season that I get this. So when it's, you know, it's, it's July, it's not July just yet, but we've got July like weather where the summer solstice has passed. We're getting long days, we're getting hot days, and then we're also getting very little moisture. Around this time, sometime around this time of June and July, there's very little water that comes through my area. Um, we may get a heavy shower here and there, but you know, for the most part, not really. And, ch and check out this fig here, guys. This is really something special. And you can see in here, the skin is looking really nice on the outside, how it's kind of getting that point right in here where that flavor is really starting to increase. That's the beginning of that drying process. And this fig is gonna be real sticky, real gooey, and jammy. This is exactly what we want out of our figs. So let me taste this now for you guys and tell you what mostly the difference is between would be this. Let me make sure you guys are, whoop, wrong way. <laughs> All right, guys, sorry about that. So. The difference between this and a fresh fig that I may have picked maybe five days earlier and also in not only an earlier time but also in a, a less optimal weather condition is going to be pretty significant. So let's try this now. It's really good. You can tell the quality on this. Wow. So. Every day that goes by, the flavor intensifies. It becomes more like a date, more like a raisin, more like that dried fruit flavor, um, and it really shows. In addition, it's really quite sticky. Um, it starts to become firm, the exterior, but the interior is actually more gooey, more jammy. And this is really where figs shine because this is literally, this is just jam. I mean, I could, I could scoop this out of here. I mean, a lot of my figs are like this, but this is a more close representation to jam, I would say, than anything else. I mean, this is a perfectly cooked jam. You know, it's not too runny. Um, it's not too thick. This is somewhere right in the middle that's probably perfect. Mm. It tastes like strawberries. It tastes like fig. It tastes like melon a little bit. A little bit of uh, some dates in there, some raisins in there. Just some really high quality. Um, it's just a really high quality piece of fruit that has a ton of complexity to it. And the skin is really giving it that, that figginess, that, you know, that date-like flavor, that dried flavor. So if you're not eating your, the skin on your figs, I highly recommend you do because you're gonna miss out on a lot of that flavor. Whereas if I just eat the interior, you know, most of what I'm picking up is berry. So you, to get the whole package, you gotta eat the skin as well. It's got its own flavor. Anyway, guys, that was, you know, a lot on, on dried figs. So hopefully you guys have learned something. Hopefully I can get this experience again because that was really good. That's only a Brava, and that was probably, for me, very, very close to a four out of five, which is, uh, that's a really high rating on my figs. Um, there's only about maybe eight 
varieties in total that have a rating of four out of five. And there's only two varieties in total that have a five out of five rating. So that was really close. And I'd be hard pressed to say that that was a, a four exactly, but yeah. Anyway, guys, I wanna thank everyone for watching this one. Again, if you know somebody who is growing figs or wants to grow figs, send them this link, show them our videos, show them the channel. And uh, yeah, subscribe, like the video, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Really all of it does ex uh, help quite a bit. So, all right, everyone, take care. We'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Have a good July 4th too. <laughs>